Hi, my name is Paul Byrne, and I'm the president of Rizzoio. And one thing we're really passionate about at Rizzoio is developing. And we want to be able to write software anywhere, anytime, uh, whenever the inspiration comes to us. So before I get too far into it, I'd just like to say that my most of my development is done on a an, an iMac, uh, whether it's at my office or at my home. Uh, I really like that arrangement, um, being able to develop anywhere, but it's not a, a great mobile selection. Now, I do have a MacBook Air, and it's about five and a half years old, so it was getting a little sluggish. And it's also really not my favorite way to travel uh, with a, a laptop. It, there's something about that clamshell, the way it opens up, and the ergonomics of the screen, they just don't work well for me on an airplane. I, I feel like my elbows are like cracked into the back of the seat behind me. I mean, it's just not an ideal situation. So recently I had a family emergency come up and I needed to leave town. In fact, I needed to go for about a month and I was gonna take some really long flights. I was, I was going from Dallas to Southern Italy, uh, connecting through London, and I was just thinking, you know, I'm gonna have all this time on the airplane. I'm not gonna be able to really do any development because I'm not gonna have a good uh, internet connection. You know, I, I can't do anything on the cloud. Uh, and you now on the MacBook Pro or the uh, MacBook Air that I was using, I had that problem, and I just couldn't see myself, you know, doing much of anything for more than you know, really a half hour or so. And I needed a solution that would work both whole situations, uh, but also work really well. Uh, when I got to my destination, I'm setting up an office, I need to be able to use productivity, I need to write documents, I need to you know, use email and you know, project management software, all that sort of thing, Figma um, you know, for design. Like, there are all these things that I needed to use that I didn't want to sacrifice while, uh, while I was there. Uh, but at the same time, I just needed something that I could write software with on the plane that I really enjoyed using. And I knew that was not going to be the case with my old MacBook Air. And so I started looking around for other solutions and, you know, lo and behold, YouTube to the rescue. Uh, I found Rob at TechCrunch and I've, I've added a link in the comments below uh, who explained this setup where he was using two devices. So one was an iPad Pro. And the second is a Raspberry Pi 4. And that combination uh, really allowed him to be extremely mobile and to do a lot of development work on the go. I encourage you to look at his video if you're thinking that you might want to do this because he walks you through how to set it up. You know, I have my MacBook or my iPad Pro. Uh, it looks like a MacBook with the keyboard on it, but it's not. Uh, you know, the iPad comes straight off. Uh, when I'm reading, in fact, uh, I did a lot of reading on this trip. I finished Snowden's book, uh, and and then you get this keyboard. This keyboard is like the key to the kingdom. Uh, part of what makes it really, really fantastic is its uh, form factor because you have the floating keyboard. Yeah, you know, it's it's pretty easy to just put your iMac on here. I actually have this on wrong. Uh, it still works though, uh, and I can uh, use the I can use the keyboard on here, and you'll notice that like from a you know the geometry of this thing, you can see that I, I've got the you know the the one side on here, um, the the screen doesn't go all the way back; it actually articulates back from the keyboard, and that gave me you know the the necessary space where I could actually work on this thing as a standard you know, productivity platform rather than, you know, cram crammed into the seat and not, you know, and not being able to get my elbows back far enough. Um, the second thing is the Pi uh, is really ideal for working on the airplane. It's small. It's a Linux environment. Like, I found it to be everything he said it would be and more. When I got to my destination, I found that I actually preferred using apps for productivity. So whether I'm working in Google Sheets or Google Docs or uh, you know Figma, uh, any of those types of productivity tools, they work extremely well in apps on the iPad, uh, and it's a lot easier to like switch between things and you know keep multiple things open at once. And I just found it to be you know um, an extremely extremely good system for doing that. There uh, were 
a couple of downsides to this whole thing and, and why I don't recommend this as something for uh, an absolute be giver, beginner. So first of all, there is some server level modification that you have to do on the Pi that's required to get this whole thing set up. And Rob actually in his video has a link to another place that walks you through it. It assumes a little bit of knowledge about Linux. Um, and I wasn't familiar with a lot of the commands and a lot of the Linux configuration that was required uh, to, to get the, the Pi to communicate not only to, to, to power from the USB-C on the iPad Pro, but also it needs to communicate and treat the Pi as like a device on the local network so that you can use the browser on the iPad Pro and you know see what you're doing in my case i was really working in two systems i was working with hugo uh, so building static website that that requires a lot of resources uh, but it does serve things up that worked perfectly uh, i did have to uh, however in working with elm which not on hugo but on a, a separate project working with elm uh, i did have to find an arm version of elm and so that was a little difficult uh, the the Pi does use some battery, but it's only really about 10%. You know, it, it was not a problem for me. I was able to use the the Pi along with the uh, the iPad Pro for about nine ten hours on an airplane before I had to recharge. Uh, I, I found that setup to work really really well. But you know, if you're in a really super time crunch situation, you know, you, you may be a little limited uh, on there. It was it was not an issue for me at all. Uh, and this setup really only works with the iPad Pro. Now, I have not tried it on the brand new iPad Air. That may be an option, but it definitely works well on the iPad Pro, but not any other versions, uh, previous versions of the iPad. And then like the biggest downside for me was the mobile browsers do not have an element inspector. Oh. And so I haven't found a good way to inspect what's going on on the front end on the mobile browsers. To be honest, most of my front end work, I really prefer to do that in Elm. And so when I'm working in Elm, you know, basically all that work is done through the compilation process and you know, troubleshooting on the front end is kind of a non-issue when you're working with Elm. So it wasn't a big hindrance to me, but if you are a front end developer and, you, and your work process is using that Elm and inspector, you're just not going to find that on the, on the iPad Pro browsers, either Chrome or Safari. They don't have it. To be honest, I have not checked into Firefox, so that may be something to look into. A couple of tips and, and tricks for this. So one is if you are going to be running something like Hugo or you know even an Express server or anything like that, uh, you need to know the Linux command so that when you SSH in with the terminal, uh, that it's forwarding the appropriate port and returning that port through the local network. Uh, I gotta be honest, I didn't know how to do that. William figured that out for me. He's our uh, head developer. And, and he showed me immediately what was going on, gave me the command, I've used it a million times. So not difficult, but you do have to know that trick. Uh, the second thing was I was getting uh, certificate errors and that was because uh, the clock was not properly syncing. Uh, maybe it had to do with the fact that I was in a different time zone, but as you probably know, like having a very accurate clock is uh, is critical to certificate validation. So I installed NTP. It's just standard, you know, app get install NTP on your device, and boom, uh, that fixed the problem right away. I had no more problem with certificates of any kind. I installed the headless version of Linux on or Pi OS now, but it's just a form of Linux. Uh, on this device and that's just how I like to, to work. Uh, I feel it frees up some resources that I don't want to use. Uh, but one tip is don't install the headless version, install the desktop version and now you have a second desktop to work with when you're on the road. So I could have set this up, you just hang a USB keyboard or Bluetooth keyboard off of it you can plug it into a TV or monitor that's in your hotel room through one of these uh, micro HDMI ports, just use an on-the-go cable. And uh, now you've got a second system. You put a camera on this, you can even do conference calls, whatever you want. 
I think, you know, web calls of any kind uh, will work with that. And so that may be one thing you want to consider when you're doing your initial setup. You can also easily, uh, because it's a Raspberry Pi, uh, just set up a, a desktop version on a separate um, SD card and just switch them out when you want to use it for a desktop. So that's another option that you have um, with the desktop version. Of course, you know because it's Linux, you can, you can still uh, do development. You can still SSH into it. You can do all those things you want. So uh, you could just have one system for both, or you know, or you could even run Tails on this thing, uh, whatever you want to do. But um, it will, um, you know, it will it will take that. And I, I would have several different uh, I would have several different OSs with me uh, in in the future. I, I did not on this trip. Again, not a big limitation, but could could become one. Uh, and then finally, you know, one of the other things is you'll notice that this thing has four USB ports, and not only are they good for hanging devices off of them, uh, but in addition, you can use them to charge. And so I had this plugged in through the USB-C port to the iPad Pro, uh, and then I had a couple of iPhones and an, uh, an Apple Watch, and I had uh, one other device that I was powering from this and just regularly charging stuff overnight. So my final judgment is Rob at TechCraft has like struck a vein, like this is amazing, this is gold. Uh, I am not going back. Uh, I, I will still continue to do most of my development work on a desktop when I'm in an office or when I'm at home. But when I'm on the road, this setup is amazing. It works, it's super portable, uh, and really handles everything I need to do. So uh, kudos to you, Rob, and uh, kudos to, uh, to TechCraft, the, the channel, for all that. Hopefully, you found that interesting. Yeah, get a little glimpse into kind of some of the links we go to at Rizoya to make sure we're available to develop, we can work on things anytime. Uh, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks very much.